Hey guys, so yesterday uh, Canonical released a final snapshot beta version of their flagship Linux distribution Ubuntu, uh, more specifically Ubuntu 14.10. Uh, um, so I thought I might give it a bit of a spin for you today. Now this video was originally going to be one of my sort of longer full length um, sort of sneak peek first impressions kind of videos, but um, there was a bit of a problem when installing it on my virtual machine, which is the uh, the way that I test all distributions. Uh, it installed pretty uh, straightforwardly. In fact, the install process was about as smooth as it always has been and, and how you can expect. However, I had a lot of problems both with the 32-bit and the 64-bit versions in actually booting up once the operating system had installed. I say difficulties, it flat out refused. It went to almost to that pre-blank sort of blank screen flat, um, splash uh, screen type of uh, thing and then just decided that it was going to halt everything there. So uh, again this is a, a final beta snapshot. They did actually mention in the press release that they thought they had every showstopper bug worked out but this is why we have beta releases. So unfortunately I'll be unable to show you what an installed system looks like today. That being said though that's not going to stop me from giving you a bit of a rundown on the kind of software bundle you can expect and a little bit um, of a commentary on the user interface because Unity of course is the most controversial of user interfaces when it comes to the Linux community. Uh, now I did force myself to use it for a week uh, I believe it was last year if I remember correctly and I just couldn't get on with it it was just too clunky too counterintuitive even just a little bit too buggy but um, I've been having to play around with it today and um well, without further ado, let's actually crack on. Now, like I say, I'm testing this on a virtual machine, which means the performance is going to be pretty subpar, even on a final release. So uh, please don't expect that. Um, uh, you know, please don't expect that the result will actually be what you see here today. Uh, today, I aim just to show you um, effectively the software bundle and just a little bit on how the user interface might look. Now, one of the reasons why I do look at uh, Ubuntu uh, in such detail is not necessarily because I'm a fan of Ubuntu in and of itself, or though I do like it from a technical standpoint, uh, but it is basically the flagship Linux distribution. It's the distribution that seems to get the most media attention and therefore has a degree of responsibility when it comes to presenting Linux to the uh, sort of, shall we say, the, the wider community. So. Uh, the first thing that you can probably notice there is the is the layout, the software bundle. And for those of you that haven't seen Unity before, this is Unity. Now, uh, Unity uh, is, uh, to be honest, it, it, it almost seems like it's, it's taking a lot of inspiration from Mac. And it, of course, uses the side panel here. Now, this is something that I've never... Uh, really thought to be a wise idea for, for a number of reasons. The first is if you've got a setup with multiple monitors uh, going around your desk like so, you have this sidebar. Now, you can either have a sidebar on each of your two or three monitors, um, which is can sometimes be just a little bit difficult, a little bit clunky, or you can have uh, the sidebar on one of the monitors. So if it's your leftmost mo monitor, that means you have to move your mouse effectively across two or three screens just to get to the... Uh, uh, to the, to the menu bar. Now that being said, this is clearly a more keyboard based user interface. In fact, if you press the Windows key, um, once I'm sort of in the distribution, you get this. This is the uh, the menu. Now, like I say, you might be able to see a little bit of uh, frame dropping here. That's simply because, or I'm assuming that's because of the virtual machine, not because the distribution itself. I'm also running the live CD version. Now, I recommend anyone who's not even just new to Linux, but wants to know if a Linux distribution might work with the hardware that they've got, Always check to see if the Linux CD, uh, the live CD works because if the live CD doesn't work, the chances are the install CD or the install the final installation won't work. Now it's not a guarantee as we've seen here today. I can run the live CD perfectly fine, uh, but it, there are some problems when it comes to install. But like I say, it's a beta distribution. Don't hold it to account too much just yet. Okay, so anyway, um, yeah, you can use the. Um, the Windows key and there are a whole bunch of Windows key shortcuts which actually it tells you about on first boot which is particularly uh, useful although it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot to remember but I have used um, a keyboard uh, sort of user interfaces that focus around keyboard shortcuts before and I've had a lot of success with them the only kind of issue I kind of take with this is that it's like half mouse half keyboard now what you can do is if you want to run a program Let's just say I wanted to run Libre um, Office Writer. Now, obviously, that is here. It's the blue one there. So that's pres presumably you just run and click on it. But if it was, um, but if I wanted to run it via the keyboard, I'd press the Windows key and just type in. Now, then, uh, what I could do is then use my mouse to uh, got to let the old logos uh, show up um, and and then click on it. That's going from keyboard to mouse, keyboard to mouse. That's kind of more 
more effort than I'd like, especially um, you know if I'm running it on a uh, on a non you know on on a machine that's not on a desk, as it were. Um, so yeah, you could you could perhaps continue writing the commands. You could use the keyboards to select it. Um, it it just seems like a few more key presses than say if you look at its counterpart Lubuntu LXDE, uh, which again also had the same problem with boot up. So it does seem like it's a uh, a, a sort of like an, an Ubuntu base type error that they might be having there. Um, you can just press Alt F2, start typing in the command, and then you're off uh, anyway. So it doesn't seem like they've really sped too much up or, or have uh, sort of invented anything particularly new when it comes to having the keyboard driven interface because like LXDE, which is a much more bare bones type of user interface still has um, just as easy access via the keyboard as it does with the mouse. In fact, you can actually opt to use one or the other, uh, whereas this seems to push you towards using both a keyboard and a mouse, almost in a similar way to how you play a game. And that kind of almost involves like full engagement with your computer. I know that sounds a little bit strange, but you can't just be sort of, uh, you know, casually just sort of surfing around just, you know, one hand on the mouse and just sort of you know, it seems like it seems like a very involved interface to actually try and use. So the thing that you've probably already also noticed at this point is that it's got an Amazon uh, link here or an Amazon app button. I don't know if you call it. And what's this? That, so that's the Ubuntu Software Center. Now, um, these are um, also what you might call. I think they're called lenses rather than menus. And um, can you access Amazon through the lenses? I don't actually think you. It doesn't seem obvious. Uh, you can through, if you click on the filter results here, you can then click on Amazon. What does that do? Does that allow you to search for something on Amazon? Um, I don't know. What am I searching for? Cupcakes. And then, and then... I'm not entirely sure how the, what the sources... how the sources work as of yet, but... Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, this Amazon button here, if you click on it, um, what does it do? Well, it brings up an Ubuntu web browser. Now you can see it's already, of course, comes bundled with a Firefox, but we've got uh, we've got an Ubuntu based browser as well. And it just basically takes us to Amazon.com. Now, as you can see here, I'm running at a 1024 by 768 uh, resolution here. Um, but what it appears to have done is just thrown up Amazon.com. Which I guess is kind of unusual, really. Um, I'm going to assume that's some kind of affiliate link that Ubuntu is using to generate revenue. Um, uh, a lot of people have, have, have criticized Canonical and Ubuntu's involvement with Amazon in the past. Now, I understand, of course, uh, Canonical and, and Ubuntu's need to to generate revenue, and obviously they're going to want to have to explore different avenues for that. But it, this does seem to be uh, a little bit... Um, Sort of tying you into things that you might not necessarily consent to being tied into. I mean, other distributions don't tend to do this, um, and maybe they might be better off making uh, a profit either through providing paid support or um, or even just sort of expanding their their app store. Now, if we go into their app store actually at the moment, because the uh, Linux-based repositories are actually a fantastic way to uh, to acquire safe and curated software, which is something that I, um, Basically, Windows needs. Um, now it has; uh, they have brought in, of course, the Windows App Store, but it's useless in my opinion. Um, okay, so uh, this is the App Store. It looks vaguely similar to uh, to what it used to, what it, what, it, what it's previously looked like. Um, they've insisted, of course, on using these auto hide scroll bars, which is again something which I'm. If you don't have a like a scroller mouse wheel, because uh, I have a trackable uh, and a trackable mouse. For me, when it comes to like gaming and everything else, it's just like significantly more precise. But it doesn't have a scroll wheel, so which means I have to kind of basically do this. Now this um, is no big gr great shakes, but it is just like a little bit finicky to to do that. Now you can remove it, so that's not again a big problem. It's something that they just seem to be committing to. Uh, now it's got uh, top rated programs. Of course, you've got the GIMP, Inks, Inkscape, uh, Boyobo Terminal. I don't know what that is. 
Windows Manager Shell Multiplexer and Integrated. It's just is it just a terminal emulator? Right, okay. That oh hang on a minute. The advanced command line and text window manager. Oh I can kind of see that. Alright. Hmm. I don't know if I'd have put that on the on the curated front page, but I guess it's top rated, maybe it's you know. You can turn on recommendations, what's new. Again, this might be a good a good option to have something curated. Um I can't see any paid apps. It says free, 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 free over there. I do remember seeing them before. But most of these top rated are actually like Firefox, for example. Um, Thunderbird Mail. You know, these, of course, are there. You might expect to see them. Um, there's no way I can actually do just jump to the, uh, the paid apps. Maybe System Sound and Video. Um... Mm. I got to admit, it's been for, for a number of years now. Their app store does look a little bit incomplete. Uh, when I say incomplete, I mean they've clearly sort of curated a lot of the stuff here. Uh, not not all of the packages um, that are available in the repository are here. I don't think. Um, and it all seems to be like you know you've got a star rating there, and you've even got how many people rated it. So it's certainly certainly good in one capacity or another um but i can't see any like paid apps i can't see any um what's the the ter tertiary bundle so that's the education package uh available from the universe source hmm i don't know tux paint more info use this source Mm, that seems a little clunky as well. I got to admit, there must have been one reason or another why Mint decided to uh, ditch the Ubuntu App Store and actually design their own from scratch. And I can kind of, kind of see why now. Now, as, as something of an intermediate Linux user, I would use the Synaptic Package Manager. To be honest, it was the first package manager I ever used, and I kind of felt comfortable enough using that. Um, I like the idea of bringing ratings into it. Um, Bam Assassin. Well, that's pretty neat. Is that a server-based, uh, mail server-based piece of software? Um, this app has not yet been rev reviewed yet in your language. Well, I like the fact that they actually let you select the language. Most helpful first. So that's all. That's not bad. But uh, again, this this has kind of almost been in the works for a couple of years now. I kind of would have liked to have seen it moved on. This could have been from the last distribution of Ubuntu, the one before that, the one before that, the one from three years ago, for all I remember. So, mm, uh, oops, cupcakes. I've got to admit, the App Store, mm, it's still, it's all, like it still hasn't moved on a bit. Uh, as of yet, so I won't go through LibreOffice um, or the or the Firefox browser. We all know, like personally, the Firefox browser best choice for uh, it, an install batch on on a uh, new distribution. I know that a lot of people think Chromium is better, and there are a lot of arguments to suggest that Chromium is better. Goodness knows, I've had a lot of discussions with you guys down in the comment section of many a video on what browser is best, and of course, Chromium automatically updates in Linux distributions, whereas it doesn't in Windows, make, making it even better. Um, but some people have some degree of animosity towards Google because um, Google might, you know, it's a long story. But yeah, Firefox is it's generally a more trusted brand, and it's one that I feel is it's legitimate to include it um, across the board. Um, so just before I close up for today, of course, you can select your uh, keyboard as well up here, volume, time, um, System Manager. Yeah, so this is having a look at some of the, the settings that you can actually change around. So I'm going to have a bit of a brief look through this. Um, online accounts. So yeah, there are there are, there are a fair number of widgets here. You can log into things like Twitter, um, Facebook, Google, AOL, AOL Instant Messenger, stuff like that. So I kind of like that touch when it comes to the widgets. Just nice having maybe, uh, I think is it Empathy or something that is... Um, that is listed here, so you can you can log into all the uh, all the social medias as part of the interface. Now that is something that I do like. It's arguably it's a bell and whistle that you don't need because I certainly when I use LXDE or a Cinnamon uh, user interface that it doesn't uh, like I don't miss it. I don't 
like it doesn't even occur to me that it's not there and to be honest if I'm completely honest I probably would prefer just a little bit of extra system resources the little bit of extra speed of not having it there because like you know and it's not like um, it's not like these apps aren't available in browser as well um, which might even be a little bit more useful considering that it's internet based services uh, but again it's it's you know I mean it maybe it's a, a newbie focused thing um, and it makes things just a little bit easier, a little more, comes together a little more neater, perhaps. So you've got your displays there. That's where you can, that's my built-in display. That's all my settings there. Uh, these are all the default settings, but again, virtual machine, it picks them out quite easily. Software updates. Um, landscape service. Now, for commercial systems and management, this is a, yeah, this is paid support. Um, it's a little bit on the pricey side. Not... In terms of its outright, in my, just in uh, my personal opinion, I can't remember how much it is now, but I've often considered uh, using it. Um, one of the reasons why I say it's a little bit pricey is, is is not necessarily because of the actual upfront cash that is required to to purchase it, um, but because my Linux system just doesn't go wrong often enough to warrant paid um, support. So. Um, you know, if it, if it goes wrong once a year, again, I've always managed to, to find out a way to, to get my system working again. Um, uh, I, I did, but basically, I wouldn't get the mileage out of it. Um, and that being said, I don't obviously I don't want to see Linux become less stable so that their, their support becomes more relevant. But um, if it were a little bit cheaper, I would put, I'd consider it getting it just for the peace of mind. But um, but the, again, it says, you, you know, that it, it, it focuses on commercial and work environments, and that's where Ubuntu has had its uh, largest success. Um, because, of course, games kind of hold Ubuntu back a little bit, although, of course, we're seeing, we're seeing, we're seeing an end to that with Steam, and uh, more and more games just being released on Steam as well. And i got to admit, once uh, there becomes a pretty effective streaming program, something in the line of open broadcast software available for Linux, um, I'm quite likely to actually make the full switch and just use emulation to uh, play the rest of my games. My computer's fast enough for it. And there is a Linux version of open broadcast software in the works. So it's pretty much counting down the days until I actually stop dual booting now, which is, uh, which is exciting times, exciting times, because I think there are enough Steam games available for Steam to actually, uh, you know, keep me occupied, keep my Let's Play channel ticking over, as well as the fact, like I say, I can do emulation. I've got a computer that's fast enough for it. Um, but anyway, that aside, um, overall thoughts on the Ubuntu, on the beta, on... And this is, let's face it, you know, this has been a bit of a trial run of, of Unity and, and, and what it can do. And I've got to admit, there I can see why there's so much animosity towards it. Again, it doesn't seem to have... Um, improved too much. I haven't come across any actual bugs in the user interface uh, that I can see, so there's at least uh, that sort of step forward. Um, but like I say, taking away a side of the screen for um, for use of a menu, I've never considered to be a particularly good idea. Um, it would be nice if there was some kind of customization you could do that. I know there's like an add-on that you can get, but, um, but, I don't, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's not officially supported. And... It's probably still either in, in, in a beta or a... Uh, what have we got here? Oh yeah, this is this is a new thing. This used to be, I think it was in, in beta or certainly not for production uh, in the last distribution six months ago. Um, but you can actually have show the menus for a window in the menus title bar. And I actually really like this. Um, and the reason I really like this is because it just it provides like I like the space that it saves having the menu bar inside of the title bar. Um, that like to me that is um, that is perfect. Um, and in fact, if you opened it up, um, yeah, there you go. So that that's perfect. You know, like I really like how that's a space saver in terms of in that capacity. But uh, then I guess I don't like how this encroaches in. Um, but then I guess you can use um, use the old auto hide, can't you? Auto hide the launcher. Yep, it'll maybe um, reveal sensitivity. 
I had this problem last time around. So, like I say, has it really come? F um, has it? Has it? Um, you know, what? What is it like then? Um, yeah, I gotta say, not impressed. I won't lie. It doesn't seem to have moved on too much since the uh, since it, it you know, since its release six months ago. Um, I I think the interface is, is is quite frankly it's a little bit clunky. Um, every other interface from LXDE, XFCE, KDE um, has 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 sort of made it a lot e you know it are easier uh, both on keyboard commands and on mouse commands. This seems to be some something that's a little bit. Not sure whether or not it wants to be mouse focused or keyboard focused. Um, it almost looks like it would work on maybe a tablet, uh, and it almost looks like it's kind of designed for a tablet. And we do know that Canonical are actually trying to break into the tablet market, but Microsoft are also trying to break into the tablet market. And Microsoft have made the killer mistake: is trying to make their user interface the same across all their platforms, across their mobile devices, across their tablets, and across the desktop PC. And we have seen people really, really not like this. People aren't stupid. People know, <laughs> you know, p p people can work out the difference between a start bar and a, you know, an app window or something like that. So. So yeah, Ubuntu just seems to be making a lot of the same mistakes Microsoft is at the moment by, uh, you know, too much um, always online type of stuff with this Amazon thing and this Amazon search from the menu and these sources should search. Um, it seems to, you know, it seems to be a UI that almost wants to do too much and... You know, I understand the, and I even appreciate that it's actually trying to challenge what a user interface and what a desktop environment does. Uh, I just don't think it's particularly successful. Um, so I think that's about it from me today. I will, of course, be checking out some of the other Linux distributions. I'll be doing the betas and I'll be checking the live CDs because, of course, uh, I have had that problem with beta installing on my virtual machine. I don't know if that is restricted to the virtual machine or whether or not it's just an, a general problem. I know that they have been tinkering, tinkering around with boot up options uh, since the last release. So again, it's not it's not like it's an unexpected, um, you know, sort of out of the dark type of error that we're seeing here and again it's beta it's not for mission critical machines and there could be showstopper bugs even if they haven't found them yet so that's why that's why widespread testing is important that's why public open betas are useful so that's about it for me today um i gotta say i'm looking forward to what the other distributions can do that being said though from a technical standpoint um I'm not entirely sure necessarily that it might be worth breaking away from the long-term support release to catch up every six months with um, what the latest Ubuntu's have to offer. Long-term support releases offer the stability that you might want, expect, and even in some cases need for mission-critical machines. Um, but if you are someone that likes to chase the bleeding edge, um, it might be worth a look. But there will be more information as I investigate the other uh, Linux uh, Ubuntu-based distributions. And, um, yeah, so that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. I do remember that uh, a few of you have mentioned that you kind of like Unity, but you um, you are something of a uh, minority compared to the number of people that just sort of uh, express a huge degree of animosity towards it. But anyway, let me know what you think. Keep it civil, of course, down in the comments section below. That's about it for me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now. So this is just the end slate, just to let you guys know uh, what other kind of projects I am working on. For those of you that don't know, I have a, a second channel where I do more informal, casual type stuff. And I also have a gaming channel, so if you guys are into that kind of stuff, uh, you might want to check those out. Also, if you want to ask me any questions or just have a chat about whatever it is that I've been talking about in this video, feel free to check out my Twitter and my Tumblr as well. I spend a fair amount of time on them. Toodaloo!